the AGM-62 Walleye is a £2,000 television guided bomb with man in the loop data link. This is the first weapon of its kind in DCS. We can not only view the camera in the front of the bomb all the way to impact, but we can also make corrections in flight. However, this bomb is based on old technology being an early smart weapon. The camera is frankly awful. This, combined with radio transmission distortions, make it a weapon you'll only ever be using against buildings, emplacements and bridges. Cluttered, busy environments can make it very difficult to spot these targets, and it will not work during night or bad light, being a TV camera. The first variants were fielded during Vietnam and was rather popular during Operation Desert Storm 2. It can be deployed standalone or using a data link pod, which is the preferred method. We can mount the walleye on stations 2 and 8 only, and they are found under the bombs category, not missile. For standalone, simply select your walleye, WEDL, on the stores page. Select it a second time to view its camera. Press sensor select switch in the same direction as the display it is on to select TDC controls. You can either select instantaneous for impact detonation or delayed views to allow the bomb to penetrate the target before detonating. Press the uncage button. We can now simply slew the seeker head onto a target to automatically lock the location on the center of the display. We can see the location that it is locking on the HUD. With a good lock, WE will be visible. If it's crossed out, the launch is inhibited with no or limited tracking ability. Once you've got a good track, press the pickle button. This will cut the video feed and release the bomb and it'll fly to its target. When the bomb is released, you will get a heavy wing drop, so be prepared to correct for this, and trim it out. It is a fire and forget weapon, much like a Maverick, the only issue is the lock range and the camera. Locking can be unreliable, putting you into close proximity with it, trying to achieve said lock, and your range is limited to only a few miles. It is critical when dropping in a dive that you gently pull up to at least 1G before release, to ensure that you do not collide with your own walleye, even 0.5 Gs is more than enough to collide with the bomb as you release it. If you have to go around or lose track of the sensor, press the crab button on the display to return to bore sight to recage the sensor. Because the camera is not terribly good at range, I usually use the HUD to locate and place the crosshair onto target. Alternatively, we can make use of the AWW13 data link pod which can be mounted on either the wing pylons or centerline. With the datalink pod, we can go to our stores page, select the walleye, and then select our datalink pod. We'll now configure the station we're tuned to. Press UFC, then press channel, and enter the number of the station we currently have selected. We can see our selected station and currently selected channel on the datalink pod page. You need to ensure these two match. With the frequency set, we can see the image from our walleye. Press sensor select to focus our TDC to the correct display, and finally we can press uncage to enable slewing of the sensor. With data link selected, there is no launch inhibition. Now we simply point our aircraft towards the target and press the pickle button to drop, and then fly the bomb onto our target. We can make use of a designated waypoint as reference for our attack, this will give us a time until maximum range countdown on the HUD, along with our range to it. I've found you can't get more than about 22 nautical miles range, getting about 18 nautical miles from 30,000 feet and 12.5 nautical miles from 20,000 feet. With a waypoint designated and in range, we simply press the uncage button to have the camera salute our waypoint if you have not already, and once we're ready, simply press pickle. You'll notice the camera jumps and we'll lose track of our point. I'm unsure if this is a bug or not, but because of this I'd recommend building up a memory of the features around the target or have a reference image to help you orient yourself back onto target. Something very helpful to include in a mission briefing or kneeboard. You steer the bomb with the TDC slew controls, releasing TDC to press or pressing it if you're using the unrealistic TDC control will attempt to lock the point centered on the display. We can see the direction the seeker head is looking, represented by a box, which is masked when it passes over the crosshair. This indicates the bomb is flying directly at our target. Try to avoid over-controlling the bomb, this will waste energy and reduce range. It's also very easy to overshoot your target, so it's best to try and get a reasonable lock early and leave it be. 
As you near the target, tapping the TDC to press repeatedly can help the bomb lock and make final corrections. You may wish to intentionally steer the bomb downwards to avoid overshooting or slipping, as the automatic tracking has a habit of overshooting smaller targets. Your ability to steer is fairly limited, so you want to be sure to set the bomb up on target by the time you're within a couple miles. You may find it easier to use the center display to guide the bomb, having a black and white image, which has better contrast. Just remember to keep an eye on where your aircraft is flying to, you may wish to repeat your HUD on the left or right display for this purpose. In the future we'll gain the ability to guide a wingman's walleye, reducing the workload for the pilot as they egress from a target area. Remember to step the station and retune the channel to match your second walleye, and to deselect the datalink pod once you are done. You can use a datalink guided walleye to attack unseen targets through a cloud layer, unlike using laser guided bombs or even JDAMs if you do not have the exact location of your target. I wouldn't recommend trying to loft a walleye as the narrow field of view on the sensor make it very easy to get disorientated and lost. Combined with the heavy weight and automatic tracking its range can be quite limited. The walleye gives us a taste of what's to come with the modern AGM-84 Slammer cruise missiles, having similar features which is due to come out later on. Until then though, we have the Warline which is a very interesting weapon and great for historical scenarios. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.